Well, hi, everybody. The weather's been the main focus of our local sports cast of late. When it's snowing and icing outside, the high school kids don't play. That's certainly the case from Springfield to Greenfield tonight. The Armor, though, in action at the Mass Mutual Center, hosting the Erie Bayhawks. We'll try and have highlights for you tonight at 10 and 11. On to the Celtics, who are the best team in the Eastern Conference, and they are by a pretty fair margin. They played Orlando last night, and how about Ray Allen? 26 points to lead all scorers. A big three late in the game, but the biggest play right here. Pierce gets the contact and the hoop. The Celts win 109-102. They're 31-9, and they'll play host to Detroit tomorrow night. Big win. Well, the Red Sox avoided arbitration today, signing Jacoby Ellsbury and Jonathan Papelbon. Ellsbury gets a $2 million a year raise to $2.4 million a year. Uh, Papelbon, meantime, also signed a one-year deal, 12, $12 million bucks. The only reliever who's going to make more than Papelbon is Yankee ace Mariano Rivera. The Bruins, meantime, they're next. And uh, can they do it to the Carolina Hurricanes one more time? They beat him 7-0 yesterday. Zdeno Chara had the hot hand with his first career hat trick. Tim Thomas, another shutout. That was at Boston Garden. Tonight's game is down in North Carolina. And uh, you can bet the Hurricanes are going to be ready. We'll have highlights for you tonight on ABC 40 Sports at 11 o'clock. Uh, on to the UMass Minutemen now, and they'll take a little momentum with them to Charlotte tomorrow night. UMass is seeking a 3-1 start in the A-10 for the first time since the 06-07 season. Uh, they'll Come into tomorrow night's game at 10 and 6, 2 and 1 in the league. That's after beating Dayton and LaSalle on Saturday at the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield. Overall, um, they are uh, actually, I guess, exceeding expectations right now. Charlotte also won beating Fordham last Saturday, so tomorrow night's game should be a good one. Above the rim tips off every Friday night right here on ABC 40 at 11:15 p.m. As you heard earlier, Ed said we may have some weather coming in, so we'll see if they cancel some games. But if they play, we'll cover them and we'll have it at 11.15. That's a look at sports. We'll be back right after this. Well, hi, everybody. It's Thursday time for another edition of ABC 40's Athlete of the Week. I have the honor and really the privilege of standing here each and every week bringing you the stories of the best and the brightest that Western Mass has to offer. I once again have that honor tonight. Recognizing Cathedral's Connor Reynolds as our Athlete of the Week is long overdue. So tonight, with a heavy heart and extreme satisfaction, we recognize one of the all-timers. Cathedral soccer star Connor Reynolds is our ABC 40 Athlete of the Week. a gamer. Um, he was certainly um, one of the best I've ever had and he's probably the only kid I've ever had who was the best player on the team for three straight years. When you think about all the tradition and all the great players that Joe Pantusco has coached over the years, Connor Reynolds was one heck of a soccer player. For four amazing seasons, Connor patrolled the soccer fields of Western Mass. He was never the fastest or the biggest kid on the field, but Connor played big. Many of his teammates at Cathedral were also some of his lifelong friends. Connor was an amazing athlete, an amazing friend, amazing brother, amazing son. He never had a dull moment in his life, always kept everybody upbeat around him. He's just the type of person that you could rely on. And even as a captain, he was my captain, if that makes any sense. It's always fun to be around. He's never, never in a bad mood. I love being around him. Um, everyone loved him. He was just that kind of guy that everyone loved. He was uh, the greatest friend to everybody. Sitting down and talking to Connor's friends and teammates, it was easy to see the impact this young man had on the people that knew him best. And Connor's exploits on the soccer pitch netted him a treasure trove of awards and recognition. Connor was all state, all scholastic, and all Western Mass. All of the accolades that go along with being a great soccer player. He knew he was good. Most people. I don't know how to explain it, but you can see in his eyes that he knew he was good. He was the heart and soul of the team, and as far as I know, for four years he was the heart and soul of the program. And there were almost two sides of him. When you were in school or out of school, he was as funny as you could be and as lighthearted, and sometimes turned into a different person on the field, just the determination. And that skill and determination was on full display the final time Connor donned his number five purple and white jersey. The last game we played was a, an epic game. Uh, we played a, a brilliant miniature on the team. It was a gorgeous night. Um, all 19 of our kids played. 
Connor was sensational. Uh, everybody knew he was the leader. Everybody on the other team knew he was the best player. And he was where he was supposed to be at that time of his life. The most important thing to remember about Connor Reynolds is not how he left us, but rather what he did while he was here. This young man packed an awful lot of life in his 17 short years. He touched his family and friends throughout his life, and many more of us with his untimely passing. Cathedral star Connor Reynolds is this week's ABC 40 Athlete of the Week. And of course, all of us here at ABC 40 offer condolences to the Reynolds family. We'll be right back. The second hole at Crestview Country Club is also the first par five on the golf course. It's a classic three-shot hole that will test golfers of every level. You want to be down the left side. There's a pond on the left side. But today, I don't think we're going to reach it off the tee. 240 yards out to the pond, then a nice second shot, lay up about 80 yards from the green, have a nice little wedge in. This week's Tea Time Challenger is Gary Ziemba from Chicopee. If the Ziemba name sounds familiar, it should. There was a house full of Ziemba brothers who all played sports. Gary got his start playing golf at an early age. We uh, cut our teeth at the Oxford, and then when that closed, I uh, played a lot at Chicopee Country Club and a little bit at Westover. So I just got, like to keep it in the, uh, in the area. When our match began, I had honors and teed off first. My drive was Great. perfect down the left side, leaving me in position A. Gary was also solid off the tee, slightly right, but still in great shape. After a pair of mediocre second shots, both of us had long wedges into the green. It was then that I decided to play the role of golf reporter and describe what Gary faced next. What Gary is trying to do is make up for a bad second shot with his third shot. Let's see how he does. <laughs> After a brief delay, Gary, using my pitching wedge, was on the back of the green lying three. My third shot was solid as well, straight at the green, just short of the putting surface. Next, Gary was away grabbing an iron, hitting a very solid chip shot to within eight feet. He had that left for par. It was my turn, and this would turn out to be the money shot. From putting just off the green, my fourth shot was nice and tight, just over two feet left for a par five. And as it turned out, Gary would miss his par putt and tap in for a bogey six. That left two feet for a par and a win. I knocked it in for a five, and our tee time challenge was done, and I had beaten Gary by a single shot. 